What's going on? It's your man, Corey. Welcome to Counter Corey, where I pretty much just want to give you my two cents, my opinion, my thoughts on a couple of things that happened in music this week. See what you guys think. So hopefully we can have some type of discussion, whether that be in the comment section below or on my Instagram or on my Twitter. Now, stick around to the end of this video because I have this game I like to play where I'm going to ask this question. It might have something to do with what we're talking about. It might be random, but it's going to be a question. And just whatever answer I like the most, I will give you a follow back on whatever platform you want me to follow you on. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, I guess. Whatever you pick, man. It's up to you. So last week's winner or last video's winner is Jazan Exclusive. So if you're watching this video, hit me up. Let me know what you want me to follow you on. Um, I'll give you like two days. And if I don't see it, I'll try to find you and we can figure something out. But now after that, you know, I'm going to have to pick somebody else. So Jazan, hit me up. And if you want to see what the question is, when that, stick around to the end of the video, check that out, and then leave your answer in the comment section below. And before we get into all of these topics this week, come and follow me on Instagram, at Corey the Savior. Come give me some video ideas, all that good stuff, and let me know what you think about some of these topics. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So, first things first, just before we kick everything off, I want to wish XXXTentacion a happy belated birthday. His birthday was yesterday. January 23rd, the rapper would have been 22 this year. Of course, we all know about the tragic ending that happened to X, um, about him being gunned down outside of the car store. So, very tragic thing to see when uh, artist, an artist that young, right? Because he was, what, like 20, 21 when that happened. So, to see an artist that young and that talented go is just going to hurt for as long as we remember who he is, right? So, happy belated birthday to him. I didn't make this video on time for it to be on time, but, you know, I'm doing the best that I can. Now, moving on to other stuff, right? Uh, I want to go ahead and get the sad news out of the way. So, Juice World's autopsy report has been released, and it has confirmed that the rapper did die from an accidental overdose of oxycodone and codeine. So, the Cook County Medical Examiner released this report on Wednesday, and it pretty much, like I said, confirmed uh, the reports that were coming from the people that were actually there with him. So it's saying here the rapper whose real name was Gerard A. Higgins died December 8th after he suffered convulsions and went into cardiac arrest as Chicago police and federal agents searched his and his entourage luggage for guns and drugs at a private hangar um, midway report. So like I said, backing up some of those confirmations we were hearing at first that he pretty much was spooked about the police coming to check the plane. Now we're realizing it's because he had um, large amounts of drugs and guns on the plane, took the pills, and it caused him to overdose. Now, what's been really sad about this is ever since this happened, his girlfriend and his mom have been very public about uh, Juice World's addiction to these painkillers and these drugs. They were even going as far to say that he's had this drug problem for a minute, and they were trying to help him fight through it. And it's been really scary, man, like, over the past couple of weeks, or however long it's been since he since he's passed, I've been listening to his music, man, and it's it's always really weird or really sad when something like this happens to an artist, and you go back and listen to the music, and it almost feels like they were telling you, like, "Hey, I had a problem," or you know, "I'm not I'm not well inside, and this is how I'm choosing to cope with these things, even though I know these things are bad for me." So um, it's not much to it. Like I said, I pretty much confirmed what everyone was saying. Hopefully, a lot of other artists take a lot away from this situation. Like, going back to the X thing, it's always really sad to see an artist that young, man, because he had just turned 21. So, to see an artist that young and also who was just, like, really starting to get into their peak die because of something like a drug overdose is just, it's always sad. And it feels like we get one of these a year or something like that, like one of these every year. And I just personally w wish it would stop. So, if you're an artist out there and you watch these videos, and you know what I'm saying? You even respect my opinion in the in the least bit, like the slightest. Don't do it, man. Stick to stick to weed and alcohol, bro. Don't do the hard stuff. So, um, so moving on to other news, the Grammy Awards have been accused of rigging their voting process, which I don't think any of us have ever really felt like the Grammys was fair. Like I've since the years that I've been watching it, there's always been a couple of nominations. Where I've been like, hmm, how did you get in there? Like. How did you really get into this nomination? Somebody's vouching for you. But now there's somebody from inside the organization coming out and putting it out there. So the person in question is Deborah Dugan, who up until last week was the chief executive of the organizing body. So she was pretty much responsible for 
organizing the actual award ceremony from the performances to the guests to all that stuff. So uh, she was suspended last week after accusations of misconduct came out about her just in the organization basically saying she wasn't doing things 100% clean. And now she's kind of taking this attention to use her platform to call out the Grammys over just their practices. So now Dugan is saying that she's, like I said, she's, she's just taking this attention uh, this, this spotlight to put attention on the situation, but that she had always been trying to make change from the inside and it just wasn't moving, nothing was shaking from it. So now she's speaking out in hopes that, well, honestly, I don't, I don't really know what she thinks should come from this because the public doesn't really get a say on what goes on in the Recording Academy, only the members do. Um, but she's just hoping to shine light onto this whole situation. So Dugan's accusation first came from a 44-page exposition that she sent to the EEOC, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity uh, Commission. In it, she stated that the award process was tainted, that there were people who had, um, who pretty much had particular interests or were being represented by certain artists that were getting says in the nominating, uh, nomination committees. More specifically, she spoke on the Song of the Year category, and she said that there's an artist who she won't name for just integrity purposes, but she said there's an artist who has been nominated that should not have been there, that they pretty much were there because, like I said, there was a body in the room that was vouching for them, and they shouldn't have been there, right? It kind of, it taints the whole process. The, um, if you're not familiar with the way the Grammys uh, voting process works, it's members only. You have to be a member of the Recording Academy, and so what they do is they send out ballots around September. Everyone votes on the ballots. Every member or every member is supposed to vote. All of them don't vote, but they're supposed to vote. Every member votes on the ballot, and then they take those nominations and then just kind of, you know, knock it down into the winners. That's how it's supposed to go. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. So she's been claiming that artists like Ed Sheeran and Ariana Grande have even been shorted, like I said, because of just the politics that's been going on. And she's even been describing the Grammys as a boys club where votes have been manipulated by secret committees. And of course, she goes and talks about how most of the members of the Grammy committee are older white men who are, you know, voicing their opinions and, and making their strength in the community be known to push certain acts through to these award ceremonies. Now, going back to what I was saying earlier, I don't really think this is any surprise. There have been obvious situations, for instance, like the Macklemore and Kendrick Lamar snub, the, the infamous Macklemore and Kendrick Lamar snub, where I'm sure we've all on the outside felt like this isn't 100% legit, even though it's not fan made. So some people always argue that, like, oh, it's not about what the <coughs> fans think. That's what the BET Awards and the VH1 Awards and all those awards for. That's what those are for. There are enough people on the inside representing certain things who have or at least that I've known personally who have expressed some of these same sentiments to where when I first started to hear about this, it wasn't surprising to me. It's no surprise that anything in music that involves money or power or an award at some point gets manipulated, right? That's one of those things that happens in the music industry that we always feel like is happening, but we can't really prove it until we get on the inside. And then by the time you're on the inside, now you're kind of being controlled and manipulated by the powers that be, AKA influential older white men with money. That's nine times out of 10 is who it is. There's always influential white men with a shit ton of money that can get you like knocked off. So kudos to, kudos to Dugan um, for using her voice to speak out on this platform because to be real with you, I don't see anything good uh, coming out of it for her. Like to be completely honest with you, we're probably going to see a lot of blackballing of her over the next couple of weeks. I know also in the, the deposition that she submitted, uh, I think she was also making some sexual misconduct allegations. So I'm almost a thousand percent sure over the next couple of weeks after the ceremony has kind of died down, because the Grammy ceremony is this Sunday. Uh, yeah, this Sunday or next Sunday. One of, the, one of these days. It's, it's one of these Sundays coming up. I'm pretty sure after that dies down, the powers that be in this community that don't want people to know about this are going to go on a blackball campaign. They're going to go on a slander campaign. Like I said, as of now, she is suspended. I either see her getting completely fired just because of all of this, 
Or worst, 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 worst case scenario, they buy her silence, which I think that would be just the worst, worst case scenario for so many reasons. Um, people need to know, man, people that aren't on the inside of the Grammys with no real control need to know how it's ran. Because like I said, we all feel like we're crazy, right? Like we all always look at certain things in the music industry and go like, man, that shit is not fair. That shit is rigged. But we, we sound and feel crazy because they tell you like, no, nah, man, this is the voting process. Everything is straight. So for her to come out and let us know that's not what's up. Like I said, man, power to her, because nothing good is going to come out of for her. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Um, but just definitely keep up with this story, especially if you're, it, I'm assuming most of your artists watching this or some type of music creative, just keep up with this story, because it's, it's, it's probably not going to get a lot of coverage on a lot of major news outlets. Like, I saw it on Good Morning America, and I saw she did an interview on, I think it was CBS. Yeah, CBS This Morning. And even the people that were interviewing her, like if you go look at some of the interviews that she's done um, about her recently, they feel very hostile. Like the energy feels really hostile. And I was talking to someone before I recorded this, and they were saying that a lot of these news personalities probably has ties to these people in the association. So, of course, they're not going to be friendly towards someone who is, you know, accusing their friends and their colleagues of something so serious. Because this is very serious. Like if... If she exposes the rigging process and it gets found out to be true, it is going to shake the very foundation of the Recording Academy. It's going to shake a lot of shit up in the music industry. Um, and for that reason alone, yeah, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think they're going to let this story get too far. So keep up with it before they start to wash it out in the media. I'm telling y'all, man, like, we got to stay on this shit. So moving on, uh, what I kind of want to get into just before we close this out is Ebro has made a comment regarding Eminem and his most recent album that really has people stirred up. So if you don't know, last week Eminem dropped a surprise album, Beyonce style, called Music To Be Murdered By, which was inspired by uh, Alfred, an Alfred Hitchcock album of the same name. So Ebro took to Twitter to share a series of tweets, and here's what he had to say, right? So Eminem treats rap how black folks have had to treat life. Be five times better, work five times harder than everyone, and still not necessarily get respect. He then went on, uh, he then responded to a fan who commented back, ain't he one of the most successful artists of, of all time? This analogy stinks. Ebro went on to say, sales doesn't mean respect. People confuse success and respect. You can absolutely hate Eminem musically, but you cannot say as a hip hop fan that he is a whack rapper. Someone uh, else then commented back, Rakim, Inspector Deck, Busta, J, Black Thought, and Fat Joe respect Eminem. They all understand to which Ebro had to say, so it don't matter what everyone thinks. Okay. In the rap game, um, oh, wait, somebody else responded, who in the rap game doesn't respect Shady? And Ebro said, in the rap game, everyone does. But if you read the tweet, it speaks to how Eminem treats rap. It's a complete false equivalency. Com uh, blah, blah, blah. It is a complete false equivalency, complete, but that is not the point. The point really is Eminem cares enough to keep sharpening his skills. So the point that Ebro is making is that, once again, going back to the original tweet, Eminem treats rap how black folks have had to treat life, be five times better, work five times harder than everyone, and still not necessarily get respected. Um, I don't agree with that. One, that's a weird comparison, right? Like, to compare the way that black people have had to move in life. The whole, we have to work five times as hard just to be half as good, uh, no notion. It's not the same as comparing to a megastar rapper who, I wouldn't even say he doesn't get respect. I would say he hasn't been getting a lot of respect recently. And that is completely Eminem's fault. Like, the biggest thing, and if you're an Eminem fan, man, we probably, this probably gonna light the fucking comments up, but the biggest problem that I personally have had as a as a Eminem fan. Like I was at one point a diehard Eminem fan. I am now a casual Eminem fan at best now. Is that no one in the community has ever doubted his ability to rap. No one has ever doubted his ability um or his his prowess as one of the greatest rappers of all time. So I do agree with Ebro on that. There's no way you can listen to rap music and not respect Eminem as one of the goats of rap and hip hop. What people are arguing about Eminem that it does not seem like a lot of Eminem fans get or a lot of these personalities who back him get is that we're not disrespecting the talent, we are disrespecting his ability to make good music. I feel like Eminem has not really put out a good album 
since what? Maybe Relapse? What was that, like 2013, 2014? Even Music To Be Murdered By was much better than the last album he put out, but I still give it like a five and a half, six at best, like to just to be completely honest with you. There were maybe like four or five songs on that project that I feel like have really strong replay value. All the other songs were once again Eminem trying to prove to us that he can rap, which once again, nobody has ever doubted that Eminem can rap. We all feel like Eminem can rap. Eminem, we don't doubt you, bro. We know you can spit 236 syllables in 30 seconds, man. That is no longer impress us. We want to hear good music, cohesive songs, songs that make sense for today. So for Ebro to go and say, Eminem treats rap how black folks have to have to treat life, be five times better, work five times harder, and not get respect. Eminem, this whole Eminem not being respected is very new compared to the length of his career. Now, yes, you can argue that in the beginning, Eminem wasn't getting respected because he was the white boy in rap and blah, blah, blah. But he got over that. He quickly got over that. What, media didn't like him? Who gave a fuck? It was media that didn't care about rap anyway during that time frame. There were certain artists that would beef with him. Okay, this is rap. Rappers beef with other rappers all the time. So who are we saying he's not getting respect from? Because going back to that one fan tweet that was sent to Ebro when he was saying that isn't he one of the biggest selling artists of all time, Ebro saying sales doesn't equal respect. People have to respect the music or like the music to go and buy it. So if, they're, if he's selling hundreds of thousands of copies of albums, Hundreds, getting hundreds of millions of streams, getting all these tweets, all these talk, getting all these people talking about him. These are people respecting him that are buying these things. Who buys a project from an artist they don't respect? I can't think of an artist that I respect whose music I don't like that I'm willing to go support. There has to be some symbiosis between those two things. I have to like your music and I have to respect you. Then I give you my money. So the people, the hundreds of thousands of people that are giving him his money, those are the people that respect him. So I can't say I agree with that. He doesn't get respect now. It has nothing to do with his talent as a rapper, more so to do with his ability as a songwriter and to put out music that people today really want to hear. At this point, M just has a really large core fan base. Like His core fan base is, I would argue, probably under half a million plus, maybe even like a million, to the point where he doesn't even have to really try hard to break these records. Like, um, I know my video got taken down for last week, but one of the main points that I was talking about was how he literally came out of nowhere and just swept the whole Roddy Rich, Selena Gomez, Justin Bieber shit under the rug. That's how powerful Eminem's presence is in the game. Who has that type of power without respect from some type of fan base? So, like I said, man, I can't agree with Ebro on this. Would love to hear what you have to think about this. Do you agree with Ebro? Has Eminem been treating rap the way black people have had to treat life? Or is he capping on this as he's talking outside of his neck? So. Um, other than that, man, we had a lot of new music come out today. Not really any project, but mostly singles. So the only project that I know of that came out today is Cold of the Friend, Lyrics to Go Volume 1, which if you're not familiar with Cold of the Friend, he's a rapper from New York. Very dope, very dope artist. Um, if you like more of the lyrical stuff like the YBN Cordays, the JIDs, definitely go and check him out. Other than that, like I said, it's been very single heavy. Doja Cat dropped her song, Boss Bitch. Megan Thee Stallion dropped her song, B-I-T-C-H. YB in the mirror dropped talking. Uh, Kiana Lade dropped Mad at Me. Jack Harlow was popping and Tyler Yahweh featuring Wiz Khalifa right now. All are out today. All very dope songs. I was checking them out before I hopped on this. Um, so if there's anything I missed, anything that you listening to that came out today, drop them in the comment section below. Put me on game. I'm always interested in hearing music that you guys are listening to so I can go and check it out. Like I said, man, y'all gotta be my ears to these E streets, bro. I can't see everything, but I wanna see everything. And of course, the question of the week or the cover they follow back, like I said, whatever platform you want me to follow you on, just answer this question. If I like it, I got you. But the question of the week is, what does it take for you to stop becoming a fan of an artist? What does that artist have to do? And I'm not talking about someone you kind of listen to, I mean like an artist you really like. What does that artist have to do or what can that artist do that will make you just lose interest in them as a fan? Drop those in the comment section below. I'm going to be reading through them. And then next week, I'll let you know who the winner is. So check back in for the video. Other than that, make sure you like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you feel like you got anything. Once again, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at Corey the Savior. And I will see y'all next week. Peace.